How's everybody doing? Welcome to River Road. I want to show River Road from a different perspective that I don't think I've shown during the whole duration of the build. I want to get up on the step ladder here and I'm going to show you a view. Let me go back a little bit further. I'm going to show you a view that even I don't see a lot because the track level is 57 inches. I'm going to focus, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm going to focus like here and there because um, just the, you know, the moving in and out. Uh, I want to make sure it's sharp. So what you're looking at right now, it, like there's, there's the middle of what I've accomplished so far. So I, I've done two feet by about 18 feet linear now in the last, just over a couple of years now. I think I'm getting into the, this is the third year here now. That's section two keeps going. And then section three is a big right, another right turn, but I'll, I'll take you over there in a minute and I'll show you just to give you an idea of where I'm going with River Road, especially for some of the new subscribers. And this particular bird's eye or as the crow flies view for the longtime subscribers as well. So what you're looking at here is section one of the River Road shelf layout. This is heavily based on a prototype on Anasis Island in the Fraser Valley in Vancouver, BC. And it's uh, SRY rail link short line. This is the marine terminal. And this is a compressed scene, although the barge ship is fairly prototypical in length, but it's been compressed a little bit. bit. Uh, I've talked about that before. Uh, this is, I would call this sort of standard compression to make this scene happen in 10 feet. Axton steel, you see that big warehouse is prototypical. And then as you swing to the left here, right to where the door is there, that's 10 feet. So when I designed, like I designed the footprint 26 linear feet by two feet with all curved fascia. I'll talk a little bit about my philosophy about it too. And I'll just get down here for a second because there's some things I want you to see up a little bit closer. Let me make sure it's focused though. So that, yeah, so apart from section two, so here's the seam right here. See there? And then you can almost see the seam right through here. It's right through here. And then I would make, there's a small cut here, but this is acrylic. And then there's a scarf joint here. All easy to fix. I'm a finished carpenter anyway. That's no big, I could do that in my sleep. I've done it so much over the years, but the bench work, I did all the bench work first. I planned it, planned it. I had an idea for years of research what I wanted to build. I had to alter the scenes obviously, but I knew I wanted to do this scene once I had spent time and gone down and photographed the prototype and thought, what a great opening section. So this is section one, like what a great subject for a smaller shelf layout where you want stub end staging on both ends. Like a marine terminal is perfect for shelf layouts. Why? Because you're gonna take traffic off the layout and stick it underneath the layout. You have to imagineer the world that you don't see. It's just the way it is. So the philosophy is, is switching locals constrained to the footprint on your layout. So like it's a whole different approach, the shelf layout genre. People that are in it understand it. They're more into the local, the last mile switching and so on with higher detail and an emphasis to the prototype. But there's a lot of freelance on here too and I'll talk a little bit about that. But let me give you one more look down here. This is the brewery. Oh, this is my favorite scene right here. Like I never, I had an idea what it would look like but until it all came together and you can go back on the channel on like the homepage under videos, I cover the whole build right from banging the first nail and driving the first screw. There's so much content there now and all my thoughts behind it. And I covered this whole build, like everything, everything is scratch built pretty much at 99.5%. I think there was one farmhouse that I didn't scratch build that I did for people that, you know, want to do kits as well, which is fine. Right? So, this particular section is not done, but I've moved away from it now because like I'll explain or I, or I have explained that. I want to save a little bit to revisit this when I feel like it. Like, there's going to be a ferry in here, like not the whole ferry, but the carrier princess. I already have drawings. I've already started. I got the main plate. But anyway, 
The Carrier Princess is just going to be like a cassette, but a prototypical model of cassette that has, in this case, most mostly petroleum grain, whatever that goes to Vancouver Island, logging camps, etc. We'll pull up to here, there'll be. I'm not going to get into the semantics of how I'm going to do this. That'll be covered when I do it. But the ferry pulls up. It'll lock into here. This will get all redetailed. It's just taped over. I did that on purpose. So it's raw plastic back there so I can weld all the details on there. When I do the front of the ferry so it, you know, couples up there. So I can just bring cars on. So I mean, there's so much operation just offloading and loading a ferry. It really is. It can take up hours, you know, just doing it prototypically. But so this is 10 feet all the way down. I had to do some compression, not hyper compression, but general compression. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Like this paved area here, people have asked, this is just balsa wood with varathane and then acrylic washes really thin washes and then I masked off for the yellow there. Uh, but you know, it's not completely done yet. I know what I have to do here as well, but, I'll, but I'm gonna come back to it sometime later because that's the way railroads are, right? Two steps forward, one step back, that kind of thing until you get it just right, until it speaks back and you know what I mean? Like for example, like when this is all done, this valance gets dropped, like this, like, like I'm I'm reskinning this valance so it's going to come down like this, so it's like this uh, letterbox movie screen, you know, viewing into the scene. Uh, the backdrop will be painted eventually uh, when I get most of it done because I don't know the composition of all the structures on the backdrop. I want to know all that first before I do the ridge line. Like the whole, when you look at uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. From this railroad, like it's surrounded in mountains. There's just this faded mountain line around the whole scene, right? But when you're down on location, you don't see much above the buildings except blue sky or clouds or whatever, which there won't be any of that. But that's for that's a whole nother big batch of content, which will also be included because I'm covering the full build right from the first screw, like I mentioned, the first nail, first screw right to the end. That that was the idea of this channel was to take you on a journey through Boomer's studio and the whole build, you know, some of the fails, all the successes, the rewards, sometimes the hard work. Like, you know, I've heard people say model railroads are meant to be fun. Of course they are, but they're not always fun. So if you built enough of them, and I've built my share, uh, this is my personal baby now though. This is the one I've always wanted to build. You know, from I, I have quite a few under my belt, but this one, this is the one I always wanted to build because I grew up around this railroad. It was BC Hydro, the yellow livery. Now it's SRY Rail Link. Like, here's the Dennis Washington logo. Here's the new meatball. So I'm building up the roster slowly. This is the end of section two. And this, you can see the joinery here. It's the same as section one to two. You can't see under here, but I just go underneath. There's three bolts that sucks this these this this whole framework tight together. All this parts and paper is to, is so in case any glue or matte medium gets on, it won't glue the uh, sections together. It'll pop. I've done it before. It's a successful way to do it. You got to know a little bit about carpentry. Like there's a scarf joint right here. You can't see it. This is one of the areas that never moved on the layout. It, like the scarf joint didn't even pop through the paint or anything. I really same as on the other joint but there's a little bit right above it because it's mirrored on the top right there's a little bit of a see there it moved there a bit but you're going to get some movement but i'm actually quite pleased that how little movement there was because it's quite a sturdy lightweight rather rugged frame and there's some metal in it too on the corners <clears throat> excuse me i got all the bus wire finally in just put that in that's 12 gauge solid copper bus for the track this is, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> this is Duncan Way. I just finished this. I'm going to cover this uh, two-part series, I think, or so. This is not quite like the large Axton steel, but I'll talk about that.
Yeah, so the Axton Steel parking lot was done differently, right? However, with this one, I wanted to use acrylics like the texture paste uh, for my own personal reasons. I like to change things up. I always want to introduce new other and new products because I want to try things, uh, you know, different. Let me make sure that's focused. I want to try uh, other materials. But I'm really big on stability. So that's why I use wood mostly and, and cork and acrylics. Because it stands the test of time. That's my philosophy. I just got that from being a pro in film and stuff like that. But, I mean, you can do whatever you want. I'm not trying to impose that on people. I'm just sharing it, right? Uh, and the reason why. It's really super durable. It's just, and it's lightweight. And, you know, and the colors are, to me, uh, and golden. The color fast rating is through the roof. So you, you don't get color fade and degradation like, like in 20, 30 years, it's going to look like this. I know because I've been building models my whole life and I have models stashed away in boxes that I used really good quality paint on and they're still as good as when they were first built. That's the method to my madness there. All these trains here too, like these are all custom done. I'm working on the roster slowly. I'm not going to do the whole roster, but I grew up around these locomotives. Not this SD35 was a later edition from the X Montana Rail Link, but I just finished that and the series on that, the full coverage on that build, but and the Jeep Nine. But a lot of their sort of original equipment was all BC Hydro. It's all been rebuilt and still running today. They're 50, 60 years old. Those locomotives. Imagine EMDs running today in 2024. Still, right? So you can see this view here. This is sort of higher up. Make sure that's focused. You can see the upper valance, right? Okay. See how you just view it's a letterbox, right? It's very immersive. If you're six feet and you're standing and operating, you don't see. Right? This is about as, as this is about what it's like when you're like uh, six feet like this. So this valance, uh, I did mention, will get lowered. You won't see any of that. Like when it's done, when I get the other pot lights, I put in other pot lights like panels, blue panels. I have LED 4000K. Well, here, let me show you. It's pretty bright though. It might wash out the, the lens of it. See there, those aren't fluorescents. They, they're, they're LED lithonias. So the foreground lighting, right? But when I'm done soon, probably this year, I'm going to put in dimmable pots, one up in the corner there. Every two feet, one there. And then one up in here as well. So I got big plans for this layout. And uh, I don't really operate on it because why? You know, I don't want to use it up before I build it. <laughs> I'm not anxious anyway. All right. Not anxious about that, but I do have, you know, I do run trains now and again, but I want to get it built first and then I'm going to plan all my ops and build the storyline once it's all finished. So this is where I'm at right here after a few years now, almost, I think I'm into the third year right here. This is all pretty just done recently. They got all this done. This was quite a bit of work doing all this, but it really turned out good. I got to tweak a couple minor things. You always do when you do buried track, you got to tweak things, but eventually you get it perfect right and then there's like six frogs in here right six isolated frogs that turn out. so i'm going to use i picked up a, uh, a six-way frog juicer inner city trains and hobbies uh, chris there put me onto it and uh well that just changes everything you just hook up the frog wire to the juicer and it, it's all automatic you never have to worry about shorting out you just throw the switch mechanically if you want mine will be underneath and Probably, I'm using Blue Point right now, like uh, manual throws. So you can see this is, that's where axe steel goes, but I'm not doing that until I can cut wood. The weather's, we're coming into spring. I got to cut all the forms for that. So I can't do any plastic work on plastics or IPEX plastics because uh, 
I don't have access to my table saw yet, but I will soon. But you can see that I've been doing building on another tree binge. <laughs> I uh, backslid into tree binge again here. <laughs> I'm getting, uh, I might as well show this. I wasn't going to, but there's going to be another view block in here, like a rising terrain. All these photos you see there, this is all inspiration for this section. The Milner Grain Ops, like Lover Road version 2, done the way I always wanted to do it. But that's coming up to right? there's loads of the content endless so there's going to be this slope here so i'm going to block like you'll be able to see ipex plastics like when the overpass goes in no problem this way and then I never want to see the, the whole layout from one position. You want to put view blocks in. Trees make great view blocks. So the idea here is to have this sloping terrain that goes up. Ipex plastics over there. The grain elevator is chronologically not far from here. So this all makes sense. So but there's going to be this sloping terrain here. And I want to... I think I told a bit of the story on the uh, trembling or quaking aspen. But I don't know if that's before this release layout or, or uh, it'll be after this update but so i'm building this this whole grove of quaking aspen like i have it visually in my mind with a barn and then a langley fields like there's a lot of sloping farms out in langley and then it's going to slope down to the grain elevator and then you can see there's a photo of it i got the guy on top of the elevator he got me those photos i got really good research on that and they just tore it down too just over a year ago i'm glad i got all that research And so, and then Crushed Crescent is going to be here. And then I have another, oh, I got another 12 feet or so for further expansion if I want. So yeah, this is section three. That's down the road coming, but this is where I'm at. This is 18 feet. Now I'll just double back now. I'll just show you, uh, did I show you from up high, just in closing here, I'll double back to the beginning and bring this uh, particular layout to a close. So you can see how, you know, it's primarily done. And I'll just mention about the station. This is actually built exactly from a prototype here in Fort Langley. It's not far from the SRY, but I obviously took some liberties here. And it, it's a restored station as of today in 20, 2024. That's the color of it. It's in beautiful condition. So I decided to model it that way. It's a Canadian Northern Station, and any Canadian model railroader should build a model of this at least once in their life. They're beautiful, iconic uh, train stations from 1915. That was a really enjoyable build, fully lit up, and some of the interiors all detailed. Full coverage on that coming, a four-part series. Okay, so uh, I just want to put a shout out to all the subscribers and everyone that supports this channel, like some people have sent gifts and uh, I'll be, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but I will be doing a video on that. Uh, one of the subscribers sent me that beautiful little trackmobile. 
I had just sort of mentioned it. What a nice guy. He's from Missouri, right? He sent that to me. He says, here, I thought it would look good on River Road. So it's going to stay on River Road. I might patch it and put SRY like the meatball. Wouldn't that look cool? If it was even repainted blue with the, you know, with the meatball like I have on this truck right here. And, you know, the meatball that's... <clears throat> Okay, let's double back one more time. Uh, the meatball that's right here, rail link. And on the barge slip. So I might do that with that tracking wheel. We'll see, but that would look cool, eh? Blue with the uh, SOY meatball on it. And then, yeah, like that logo right there. Okay, so pretty cool, eh? Uh, pretty happy with the way things are going so far. Thanks for supporting the channel the way everybody does too. The comments are excellent. The, it's a, such a mature community built around River Road on Boomer Diorama. I'm so uh, happy about that. It's, I hope it's inspirational and educational to people at every level of this wonderful hobby that we all share, okay? So cheers, happy modeling, and we will see you soon.